In the name of Jesus Christ, who has canceled all of our offenses and delivered us from death by his innocent death on the cross, it's in his name that we gather to hear his word, be comforted by what he has to tell us about who he is and what he has done for us. About 10 years ago now, I had the great opportunity to go and visit Zambia, Africa for six weeks. Zambia is very much still a developing country, although there is some urban development. For the most part, everybody in Zambia, the, the majority of the people in Zambia, still live out in the bush. They live out in dirt where there's dirt paths and roads, and uh, they live in dirt-built huts with the uh, thatched roofs and everything else. It's very much a developing country where even the religion is still of the old kind. There is Christianity in Zambia due to uh, good Christian uh, missionaries, including some from our own church body that are over there. But there's also a great number of the spirit, spirit, spiritism religions going on over there still. And there's a, a great kind of battle that goes on between the Christian religion that's over there and the spiritism. And there's, it's very difficult because sometimes they try to mix the spiritism into the Christianity and, and, and it's, it's still very much uh, a mission field over there to bring the gospel of Jesus. Well, the day after we arrived in Zambia, we were invited to a funeral. One of the missionaries was going to uh, preside over the death of someone who was a Christian way out in the bush. And so my parents were over there already. And so we got into the Land Rover with my parents and they drove us out into the bush until we came finally to the collection of huts that served as the dwelling place where this man had, had perished. And as we approached this, this house, we were met by a cacophony of sound. There were, it was amazing. There were hundreds of people surrounding this whole area. And it, the noise was just tremendous. And as we got closer and, and we got to the place and, and, and we sort of started listening a little bit more carefully, what we noticed was there, were, there was really two camps of noises that were going on. The, the dead person was laid out in the middle of the courtyard there. And there were two camps. There was on the one side, the Christians that had gathered for this Christian man's funeral. And they were singing psalms and hymns and, and, and spiritual songs. And on the other side, there was the non-Christians who were wailing and weeping and mourning in these loud shows of, 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 of wailing and mourning. And we were met by this cacophony of sound where it was this play Christians singing hymns with joy in their hearts and these uh, non-Christian spiritists wailing and mourning and carrying on. Well, the, this kept going and kept going until the time came when they took the body and uh, they carried it around into a maize field, the, the corn maize field, and they walked it through and there was this big procession where everybody followed along and you had the, the spiritists who were still wailing and mourning and you had the Christians behind them who were singing and shouting and, 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 and having smiles on their faces. And we took this long path finally out into the maize field to where they had dug the grave for this man. And they brought it down and, and they actually lowered, lowered the body into, into the grave right away. And the missionary got up there next, right next to the grave and he had everybody sit down and the Christians quieted down and they stopped their singing. But the spiritists, the, those native religions, they, the, those people, they kept mourning and wailing and carrying on and it was very loud and, and kind of annoying. <laughs> and the missionary, after he had everybody sit down, raised his voice very loudly and told the people that were wailing and mourning to stop it. And he was stern about it, very bold. And he told them to stop it, to be quiet, stop your wailing and mourning. And finally they did. And he went into his message where he talked about sin and grace. And he talked about how this man had died because of his sin 
But then he talked about Jesus and about how Jesus had forgiven this man from his sin and about how this man, though the body may be lying here, was not truly dead because his soul was in heaven. And he gave those Christians comfort, right, that they knew, but he also gave a witness and a testimony to those spiritists on why they shouldn't have to cry and mourn and carry on. Because the spiritists believed that when somebody died, they, they were gone or their spirit came back and actually haunted people. It was very frightening. But this missionary gave them reason to hope by proclaiming who Jesus is and the power that he has. Every time that I read the account of the raising of the widow's son at Nain, which we have before us today, I think about that experience that I had in Africa because we kind of meet up with something just a little bit similar in, in this lesson. Our lesson begins, and I'll read it in just a minute, but our lesson begins right, right off of where we left off last week. Last week we had Jesus healing the servant of the centurion in Capernaum. And today's lesson takes us a, 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 a day's journey or so uh, from Capernaum to the city of Nain. If you remember, Jesus at this time in his ministry already had a very large following. There were many, many people who were following him, whole crowds. He had his 12 disciples, whole crowds. And every time that they heard him preach and every time that they saw him do a miracle, it just buoyed their spirits even more and they wanted to follow Jesus even more. So if you take out your bulletin, you have it there before you, we're going to read it in sort of in chunks and I'll stop and explain some things as we go along. So soon afterward, that's soon after uh, the Saturian situation, Jesus went to a town called Nain and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Let's just stop right there for a moment. Do you see, do you see the two processions that we have, kind of like the processions that I found in, in Zambia, where you had the Christians and, and the non-Christians? Well, what you had here was the procession with Jesus. This whole crowd, this wonderful crowd that's following along with Jesus, and they have joy in their hearts. They're so happy to be near this great prophet and this great man and this, this one who could do all this cool stuff. And they're following along. And you can imagine that if there's a large crowd, it's going to be a pretty lar loud crowd too. And as they're following along Jesus, they're, they're happy and they're joyful because they're in his presence but then we have another procession, the procession coming out of the town. And this is not a happy procession. This is a sad procession. And what we know about Jewish culture at that time is that when they had a procession like this, it was not a quiet procession. When they had a procession like this, a, a, a funeral procession, it was a loud procession where they would actually, if they didn't have people who were designated, they could actually hire people to wail and mourn and carry on along with the, along with the dead body. That was, that was accustomed to the recognizing the gravity of death, but also the fact that they really had despair when they were met with death. And so they were carrying on, process, processing this dead body out of town to his burial site, wailing and mourning and carrying on. And so you have these two processions meet. The happy procession and the sad procession. And it's sadder even still when you know who it was that was dead. It was a young man in his teens. The Greek word for young man here means a, a teenager. The only son of his mother and she was a widow. 